Hi, I'm Justin Snedden from the AR team at Niantic, and today I'm going to teach you about meshing. For this tutorial, I'm assuming that you've already set up your scene, you've brought in Lightship, and you've tested that everything's working, and that you've added a playback scene so that we can just jump in and set up meshing. So let's go over to the camera offset and add it empty, and we'll call that meshing. And what we're going to do is uh, set this up with a mesh manager. And then uh, what we'll need for the mesh manager is a prefab because it needs something to place. So we'll make one of those, so create another empty. And on that we'll add a few objects, we'll just call it a mesh prefab. So here we'll add a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, and a mesh collider. Uh, now if you'll notice there's no material on it, so let's go ahead and add a uh, just a default material there, diffuse. And now we can grab that object, turn it into a prefab by just dragging it out and delete it from the scene. So then go back to the meshing manager and we drag that prefab into the prefab location. Hit save and go, and you should now have meshing running. And as you can see, the mesh has been generated uh, into the scene. We're going to keep recording just so that you can see what this whole thing plays out as because we're going to go through and change some more settings so that you can see what it looks like when you turn the LiDAR off and you turn on long distance meshing which is something that is provided through Lightship only. So let's go back to our mesh manager and over here we'll add another component search for light chip meshing extension and add that. Now this gives you more settings to change the way meshing works. So the first one is this frame rate, so let's make it run a little faster, which is up that's 20. And then there's a few other parameters here which determine how the voxelization works to generate the mesh. So we just want to up a few of these, so we're basically saying we want to mesh for 40 meters and uh, we would like the voxels to be a little bit bigger because we're meshing so much more. And then we also want to turn on some cleanup. So when we get more than 40 meters away from things, we want them to be deleted from the scene. And the last thing we'll do is we'll up the number of threads that it uses. By default, it's at four. We'll give it a few more because we're basically saying to mesh a lot more geometry now, so it'll need a bit more processing power. And when we play this, you're going to see a complete difference in the amount of mesh that is generated. And there you go, it's instantly meshing the entire room, not just that sort of five meter distance that you saw before which is the, the standard limitation of meshing when you're not using Lightship. So I'll also let this one play out just so that you can see that this entire uh, playback recording of our London office is instantly meshed. You know, you turn around and there you go, the whole room is done straight away. Now you can see in the scene view that there's some noise in there, but this is significantly better than what you can get out of the box. So this is great for your physics simulations. So now let's go ahead and make the scene a little bit more fun. We'll add a ball in with some physics so that it can bounce around the scene. So let's start off by making uh, a sphere in the scene. And then we'll rename that ball and we'll go over to its settings and we'll add a rigid body so that it has physics. And then we'll make it a little smaller because we don't want a one meter ball. It's 10 centimeters should be fine. And then once we've done that, if we play this scene, what we should see is just that the ball falls. So we know physics is working and there you go, it's fallen down. Now that's not great. We actually want to launch it into the scene. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and do some more changes. If we uh, want to make, we want to grab the ball, drag it out and make it a prefab. And then we want to delete it from the scene. And then we want to make a object to launch it. So let's make a, an empty, call it launcher. And we're going to add a script on that. So create a script. Uh, call that launcher as well. And then add the script onto your empty. So you can just drag it on there. Uh, and then open it up. So just double click it and open it in whatever editor you use. Now we're just going to whack in some code here that will basically say, hey, I'm going to pass in a prefab, which is the ball we just made before. And then we're going to uh, take that ball and we're going to take the camera and we're going to fire the ball in the direction the camera is facing with uh, a physics uh, force. 
So the first thing we want to do here is get the input. So we're just checking for a mouse click in this case because we're working in the editor. So just get mouse down. So if the mouse is down, and then in here we'll whack in some code to say get the ball and instantiate it. So the prefab we passed in, make it happen. And from that ball, we can grab its rigid body, and then from the rigid body, we can set a force. So we can just say fire it forwards at, at 200 newtons. And now we just need to assign the ball to the launcher so that it knows what to fire. So we just find it at that. And then when we play this, if we click on the screen, we should fire a bunch of physics objects. And there you go, firing in lots and lots of them, and they're colliding with the mesh that we made. So now we have meshing and physics and collisions. So lots of collisions here. So we don't really want a big white mesh on everything, so let's make it invisible. There's a couple of different ways to do it. So the first way is go to the mesh prefab and just turn off the renderer. So basically on this object, we only really need collisions. So if we untick mesh renderer and hit go, we should now see collisions, but not the big white mesh. So the, the mesh is not being drawn, but the collider is still there. So when you fire the things, they do hit something. But now we've got a different problem. There's no occlusion. Because we've said render nothing, which means Unity has nothing to occlude the, the spheres with. So you see them behind objects. So they are colliding, it's just not drawing the way we'd like it to. So let's fix that. We can just simply go over to our uh, camera and we can add an occlusion manager to it. So just add component, our occlusion manager. And now we've enabled inclusions. So when we run this, we should see occlusions and uh, no mesh. So hopefully here we'll fire and away we go. And now you're seeing that the, the spheres are occluded by the table and they also collide with the top, top of it. So now we have a system that's working. Well, you can see there's a little bit of flickering going on. So there's a few other things that we can do to improve this. And if you're very quick at looking, you'll also, also notice there's no shadows. So we're going to fix both of those things. So let's go back to our mesh prefab and basically we want to uh, have the mesh renderer on but what we want to do is render that mesh with an invisible shader. So we'll turn it back on and we're going to write a different uh, shader, add it to a material. So here, create a new shader. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, I just picked unlit and we will just call this invisible with shadows. Now handily, we've already written one of these for you. So what we're going to do is open this up and then we're going to jump over to our GitLab because in our GitLab, we have a samples project and in that samples project, we've already got a shader that will do this for you. So it saves you writing it. Assets, then samples, and then navigation slash game board. You'll see there's a folder called shaders. And in there, you can just copy this uh, invisible mesh with shaders. So just open this up, copy everything that's in it. Go back to Unity and drop that over your shader here and then grab the name of it. This is basically a shadow that says don't draw the mesh but do draw the shadows. <laughs> it's essentially the, the, the core of it. Now in here we'll make a new material and then on that material we'll just pass it that shader. So you can call this one invisible uh, as well. Pass in the shader that you want to use and then we're going to Assign that new shader to the mesh prefab. And now we have an invisible shader that will draw shadows. We need to change one more setting because we don't want an invisible mesh to self shadow. So you have to turn, uh, turn cast, uh, cast shadows off. Now when you run this, and again, the mesh is invisible, which is great. And when we shoot, we are colliding and we are occluding. And as you see, we've got shadows. So now we've successfully uh, made it slightly better. But we've still got this uh, flickering problem that we saw before. So let's fix that. So let's go back to the camera and add a Lightship Occlusion Extension script. And on that script, we can set the option for uh, suppression, which is a way of holding out the ground so that we get rid of that flicker. It requires a semantic segmentation manager. So let's add one of those, AR Semantic Segmentation Manager, and then wire that back into the occlusion uh, system. So just select it. And now we have this suppression channel option. So press plus and we're going to say suppress the ground. 
And what we're saying is that we want to draw the ground as though it's very far away. That way any creature walking on the ground won't be occluded by it. So now when we run this, and uh, we fire a lot of these uh, spheres, you can see that they don't flicker anymore. They're, they're much, much, much better. Um, and you, you've got your shadows. You don't have a, as much of the, the noise that you had before. So this is significantly better than it was. I have one other option here to help improve this further uh, called stabilization, which you can turn on, and then you need to pass it to Mesh Manager. This is going to blend both mesh and instant occlusion together. It works well in some circumstances, so balancing this and suppression are things you need to do to get your scene to be perfect. But by turning them both on, you can just see that we're doing a little bit more work to try and make the occlusions a little bit better than they were before. Let's have a little bit more fun and make this a better simulation. So we're firing quite a lot of those spheres, so let's add a fire rate to the script so that we can control it and you know, we'll add a variable called fire rate, we'll just make it every half second so that it's not shooting so many of those things. And then we'll need a timer in order to make this work, so we'll add another variable called timer. And then uh, in our update loop we'll use those two variables in order to control the rate that in which it fires by just simply saying um, increment the timer based on delta time. And then in our if statement, we'll just check that the, the timer is greater than the fire rate. And then we'll reset the timer when we go through this if statement. Let's also remove the hard coding for the force, so we'll make another variable called fire force. And we'll pass that to the add force function here so that we can control this outside from the script object. And then let's also pull out the launch uh, direction. So basically, we want to throw the ball up a little bit so that it curves when we throw it. So let's make a vector, call it launch direction. And what we'll do here is we'll make it equal to the forward plus a little bit of the up vector of the camera. So as I said, when you fire, it's going to cause a bit more of an arc to the ball, which will be nicer. And then, uh, yeah, we probably don't want it to be uh, one up. We'll, we'll cut that and just make it uh, a small a chunk of up, and about 0.4. So now the next thing we can do is we can make the ball a bit more bouncy. So let's add a, a physics material. And then we'll just set that physics material to have a bounciness factor of like one. So it just means it bounces a bit more. And then we can select the ball and give it that physics material. Now let's make one more uh, adjustment here. So on the ball launcher, what we'll do is just put the force back to 200 because 300 is a little too strong. We were overriding collision. So now when we run this, we should have a much more bouncy ball. So when we throw these, you can see that they bounce a lot more when they hit the mesh, which is a much nicer effect. Now let's do one more thing just to, to round off the effect, because it kind of looked like a tennis ball. So let's make a new material. Um, so just create a material. And we'll make this one just solid green. So let's just call it green, and then go to the color here, set it to a green hue. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll assign that to the ball. And then if we run this again, here's our lovely throwing tennis balls in the room simulator. Um, and as you can see, there's a nice, nice uh, bounce to everything. Um, the last thing we can do is show that this will work when you build to device, so iPhone or Android. So yeah, I'll just stop.
uh, <laughs> playing and bring up settings again. So you need to turn off LiDAR if you want long distance meshing to work on a LiDAR device. So I recommend that you just tick this off so that everybody gets that 10 to 20 meter experience rather than five meters of LiDAR. And here it is uh, running on my phone. And as you can see, it's working fine in the real world. And our tennis balls are flying through. Occasional miss like you saw there. Um, and that's due to uh, the meshing hadn't quite hit that tile. Um, if you move the phone around a little bit, it always fixes itself. Thank you for listening and I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial.